NLP is called Neuro Linguistic Programming. And to keep it really simple, it's ultimately the language that we use um, towards ourselves, how we speak to ourselves, the voice we use, the inner critic. And it's learning about different ways to use our brain. Our brain is so powerful. It can make us or break us. It can make us a victim. It can make us like a winner. You know, it really does depend on what we feed our brain. And considering we're the ones that are in charge of our brain, then it's really important to know that I'm going to feed my brain with the right thoughts so that I have a really great life. So neuro-linguistic programming is a big part of understanding how am I talking to myself? What am I doing? What language am I using? Am I generalizing? Am I distorting? You know, the list goes on. I could right. talk to you about this for hours and yeah. you know, I need to like rein myself back in with this, but no, yeah, that's it's, okay. interesting. it's interesting. Let's go a little bit deeper. Like you talked about how we have so much power over our thoughts. How do you go f- from what, y- what you said, like what your brain currently is to, to the ideal thoughts you want to have? Like what is, that, how does that transformation look like? It's a process. And the transformation is like climbing up a mountain sometimes. I mean, I'm going to be honest, this isn't like an overnight thing. Right. But when you learn the tool and you put the tool into practice and you practice and you practice, and when you understand that, you know, when you're feeding your brain the wrong stuff, your life's not going so great, you know, and it's, and it's a much better way to think about things differently in a realistic way, right? In a way that you believe to be true. This isn't like... You know, I love the idea of mantras. Again, it never really worked for me. Me standing in front of a mirror going, I'm confident, I'm confident, when I didn't believe I was, you know, it was painful for me. So I had to start to find thoughts that did make me believe that. And so it's a process and a practice. And so it's like climbing up a mountain, but you do get to the top of the mountain, right? You do get there. And then you're like, wow. And that space in your head that used to be so loud and busy all the time is just very peaceful and quiet. And it's really a beautiful thing to do. And I'm a real believer of self-development, right? Like I think developing ourselves is one of the most important things we can do. You know, it's really important. Yeah, I love personal affirmation or positive affirmations. And a lot of people have that issue where like, it's hard to say something they don't believe. So you're saying to, you have to kind of like bridge the gap with saying things that you do believe, right? Just some a slight is it kind of like baby steps where it's just like something slightly more positive but still realistic and you just keep doing that yeah I really like realistic and you know I'm not saying mantras are wrong because as exactly as you've said like for some people they really work for me it didn't I really wanted to believe it but I didn't believe it so it just wouldn't work for me because I didn't believe in certain times of my life like that I was worthy of love or I was strong and independent and capable like there were times I didn't think that at all so it was very hard to to do that now there are some mantras which are really beautiful you know like you can pick things out that you look at or you read and you're like, yeah, that's a beautiful mantra. And I could start to try to believe that. And that's a really great start, you know, for people. For me, anything that works is worth it, right? Anything that works. So we're all different. So some things will work for some people and other things will work for other people. Okay. So in terms of like changing our beliefs, because I know a lot of people, they're stuck because of things like limiting beliefs. They don't believe they can do something. How do you approach that with some one if they're trying to like change themselves? Yeah, it's a really good question again. Beliefs are basically thoughts that we've thought thousands of times and we've made to be true. Okay. And a lot of our limiting beliefs actually are not real. And so what we've done is we've made these thoughts in our brain facts and we make it a fact and then we live according to this fact, which is not actually a fact, right? So if we are saying, if we're walking around saying, you know, I'm not capable of doing X, Y, Z, then of course, you're not going to be capable of doing X, Y, Z, right? But when we learn that our thoughts aren't factual, and in an instance like that, I would say, look for evidence to disprove that that's real. And it's hard in the beginning because people are really stuck on like, oh, no, I just think this way. I just think this way. I just think this way. But when you actually say, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try and find some evidence to disprove that. Like, where have I been capable of doing something? It's like, you know, maybe I hold down a great job or I've got really good friendships or, you know, I've got a healthy relationship with my family or whatever. You know, those things show you are capable. So... We are very good at looking at the negative all the time until we learn to train our brain not to do that. And once we've learned 
how to do that. We just don't step into that negative again. Because like, why would we? 